Podcast on Power Talk AM 1460 and FM 101.1. Streaming worldwide on iHeartRadio. Jan Price talks to the movers and shakers in the film business. The Jan Price Show. You're listening to The Jan Price Show. And today my guest is director Chris Foggin. And we're talking, going to talk about his charming British film, Fisherman's Friends. Welcome to the show, Chris. Hey, Jan. Thank you so much for having me. I'm absolutely delighted to be chatting to you. So thank you very much for that. Well, thank you. It's my delight to have you on the show. I have to say, I just thought this movie was so much fun, so heartwarming, so touching, uh, a feel-good movie, the kind of movie we need right now more than ever. Um, And when your publicist had sent me the information on this film immediately when I read the synopsis, I said, yes, I definitely want to talk to uh, the director. Uh, so I'm very happy to have you on the show. Chris, tell me, awesome. how did this project, you're welcome, you're welcome. How did this project um, come to you? How did you get involved as the director of this um, Fisherman's Friends? Um, oh, well, well, thanks so much for that introduction. I'm so pleased you liked the film, Jasper. So thanks very much for that. But yeah, I, do you know what? It's kind of... It's been a long, before I kind of started uh, directing it, it was a, it was a little, little bit of a long story. I was kind of making another film at Elon and I met the producer, Jim Spring, and um, and I remember kind of at Elon, I was like going through reading the scripts that they had, and this, was, this must have been about 2013 now, and I came across Fisherman's Friends, and uh, and like just as a filmmaker, they, they're the kind of films and like stories I just like, I'm so passionate about telling, like feel good and, you know, like making people smile for a little bit is everything kind of what I aim for and look for in like films even to watch. So I read this script and like then went straight over to James and I was like, oh, please, please, can I direct this film? Um, and he was like, and at the time I think it was, yeah, they might have been with somebody, but it kind of went away. And then a few years later, he just rang me and um, I think he said something like, oh, have you got you, you want to get your bucket and spade ready? And then he said, oh, can you remember reading this back then? And I did. And um, he just said, oh, would you like to direct it? So then I met uh, the other producers, Nick and Meg, who also wrote the screen play it with tears and yeah and that was it really the next it, it kind of all happened very quickly um from meeting them to going down to port isis to film the film it was um, it was very, it was very quick and it, you know turned out to be a fantastic experience oh you know and and filming in port isaac um in cornwall it just looked so beautiful i mean it was just so beautiful and it was great that you were able to go to where the story actually took place so tell the yeah. tell our listeners a little bit about what Fisherman's Friends is all about, so they understand yeah, well, what we're talking about. Yeah, so if anyone's just seen the film, basically it's about, yeah, like 10 fishermen who were at the time, and they kind of, they always sing on the plath. It's this thing that they kind of do down at the, uh, on the course, and they sing every Friday night. And this is just about a film about a guy who came down to London on a Skype weekend and heard them singing, and then just kind of set up and, and, and to kind of convince these guys to come and um, create a record and then thankfully when it came out and they recorded it it got without spoiling the end it got like the top 10 single and it was one of the first like records for us to do that and it was quite a big deal so yeah it was amazing to, to kind of tell this you know feel good kind of true story and then to go down to Port Isaac where it all happened and to meet all the fishermen and everyone was just amazing and without their kind of help and support from the village itself it just it, it just wouldn't have been possible because they just welcomed all of down there and they were so kind of you know so generous with their time or their knowledge or you know you would like to say where can we film this place and they always had ideas and it was just honestly Janet was, they, they were so loving and the, you know every single person was wonderful to be around and it was I think we shot for about four weeks and yeah, yeah it was just a lovely time and the weather was great as well and yeah so it was, it was very fun. What a great experience and to have all of them be actively involved so the, the so these are just these were just fishermen who just went and on Friday night and sang, and then this music producer uh, shows up for this stag weekend, as you said, and discovers discovers them. But they go through lots of trials and tribulations, which is you know what makes the story interesting. That they but they persevered. Yeah. I mean, and at first they really weren't that interested in wanting to be yeah. you know found 
or be in an, uh, you know, in a, uh, you know, on a record label. But that all changes as time goes on, obviously. So, um, how did you end up casting this film? Because your lead care, and, and and again, this is based. It's it's based on a true story, but obviously you had to, you know, with the writers, um, you know, the, the screenwriters uh, created a, yeah. a, a little different version of the facts, which makes it interesting yeah. too. Meg Leonard and yeah. Nick Moorcroft are the are the screenwriters of the film. So, um, how yeah. did that? You know, how did the uh, fisherman's friends feel about their story being not only just told, but also having it, you know, the having it be a movie where it has an interesting uh, storyline to it? Um, how did they feel about that? Yeah, they, they, do you know what? They, again, they were so supportive. They were so great about it. And, um, you know, I just like, you know, speaking just, you know, for myself, it was one of those things where, you know, like kind of making it, and I know, like we all felt that we just had to do the best we possibly can. Like, you know, if if nobody in the world liked the film, but they were happy with it, that would have been the best kind of response. Do you know what I mean? Whereas I would have yes. taken that over every single person in the world liking it, but they weren't happy. I'd have found that really like sad. So it was, you know, they they were they were so great with it. We would sit with them in in pre production, and they, you know, they obviously read the script before we started filming. But they were they were they were really happy, and then you know, I think you know, obviously seeing the film finished as well, they were great, and we all had a little premiere down in Cornwall before us came out, and everyone got together, which was lovely. And um, yes, yeah, so it was a great experience. And then on the casting, it was very simple, really. Obviously, we were working off a great great script, and everyone really loved Danny Mays. I worked with Danny years ago when I was a kind of set PA. And, I know like Nick, Meg and James all loved him as well. So he was sent the script and then I went and met him where he lives in London and we chatted a little bit and then he was on in the film with James Purefoy who plays Jim. I worked with him years ago when I was an assistant director and always wanted to kind of work with him in a similar capacity. It's like, you know, one day I'd like to direct and hopefully we'd work together like that. And then Tuppins I've just always been a fan of and, you know, as well as everyone else and, uh, went up to London one day to meet her and, you know, I was like, oh, she's perfect. And everyone agreed she would be a perfect Owen. So, and and they were brilliant. Every single one, you know, from um, David Heyman to Noah Clark, Jade and Nuka, everyone just throughout, it was, you know, all the actors were brilliant to work with. Oh, they they were, and they're all perfect. James Purifoy, um, everybody will uh, recognize him from uh, the many, he's been in many, many things, but uh, Romans, right? Yeah. Uh, Rome, Rome. He stars in Rome. Rome. Yeah. Uh, or, ha- yeah, had starred in Rome. So, so the, um, so, so the, when you were doing this, what was the, you know, did you actually, is the singing from the film, is it actually the actor singing or is it the actual fisherman's friends doing the singing? We kind of used both of them. So the actors would sing. So any kind of like close-ups that you would see, um, we would use the actors. And then whenever it was, you know, it was like a wide shot or we kind of cut away to something, definitely to get the harmonies and to get everything right, we had the fisherman's friends sing as well. So we kind of recorded this then. Ruby Christie, who was fantastic, we recorded all their albums, did the score in the film, and mixed all of us. And um, yeah, so there was a there's a there's a mixture between the actors and the real fishermen. So tell us a little bit about these songs that they sing. What's the history behind them? Oh God, now you're asking, Jan. Do you know what? I don't. <laughs> do you know? I wouldn't feel. I, I wouldn't feel. You know, this is terrible. But I, I, do you know? I wouldn't feel confident. Kind of. No, do you know? Like, and, and like, and, oh, uh, embarrassing me as well. Kind of admitting, I'd never heard of that music as well before I read the script. Like these sea shanties, it was it was something that I'd never. And like, and again, embarrassing is that I've always loved music and kind of been brought up around music. And the sea shanty, I'd never really kind of heard of. So you know, reading the script and then reading about that and then like delving into them a little bit more. And that was the first time I heard. But honestly, since going down there and witnessing them sing in the pub or being, uh, you know, had the good fortune of watching them sing on the class. I mean, now to this day, even though I worked on the film for a couple of years and I, I heard all them songs, it's you know when. I I go running, it'll come on my favourite playlist and all that. And I've, it's not a track that I'll skip over because I've heard a thousand times. I still 
I enjoy them and all that. But in terms of the history, I, I, I'm not quite sure that I have the company to kind of go chat about that, to be honest. Okay, fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> well, I mean, it is, it's just such uplifting music and um, that yeah. obviously, and the whole movie is, the movie is, uh, uh, as I said, it's the perfect movie for today. It's It's got charm and character and, you know, it's got a love story in it and how the music and uh, these meetings all help, you know, transform people uh, within uh, just from their association. What was the... um, what was the reaction when you showed it? Uh, did you have any screenings anywhere prior to uh, the p- pandemic hitting? Or did you have? Did, were you able to show it uh, to audiences at any film festivals or anything before yeah. the shutdown? Yeah, do you know what? We were really fortunate, John. So the film actually came out last year here, a similar, similar time. It came out around March time. And um, do you know what? Honestly, like so we were blown away by the reaction here in the UK. It did, it did, re- it did really well. It kind of opened up second in the box office behind Captain Marvel. It, it literally went wow. bigger than we kind of ever expected, really. Especially for me, I, you know, like so, yeah, it just, it just hit the chord. And I, I think, you know, like this is, this was like a year before the pandemic, so. You know, and I was so proud, like, you know, everyone involved with the film. It's like we put it out there and thankfully we had an amazing distribution with it um, by, with entertainment. And they put it in cinemas and they backed it. And it, yeah, as I say, it went over in like 500 cinemas, which is, you know, to get a film in a cinema later is still really difficult. So it was a kind of a dream for me to get a film out in the cinema. And yeah, and it just, it just did really well. And it was like top 10 box office for many weeks. And yeah, I think it's now kind of one of the most like successful British indies for a long time and all that. So we're really pleased. And, and I think it was just because of like that feel good. Listen, it's not a work of genius, you know, by a long stretch of the imagination for myself. But it's just, it's just like, a, you know, it, it it is what it is and sometimes like people just like them kind of movies where you can just sit and you know you don't have to think too much and you know it's they're pretty they're pretty harmless and as I say as a filmmaker they're the films I enjoy the most they're the films I hopefully kind of continue to make and all that so yeah and like so now you know like I've sort of like again like what about you know, like as a filmmaker and what I really want to do to kind of make a film that's going to be released in the US is like a big deal as well for me so you know like as I said I'm so happy to be kind of chatting to you and I, and I hope people and I hope Black American audiences really like it and, and you know like if it's you know uh, it's so tough out there at the minute so hopefully it'll give people a little bit of you know make them smile for a little bit whilst it's yeah everything with COVID it's very tough at the minute yes, yes so what were the plans initially before the pandemic hit was it going to be released to uh, theaters here in the US I think do you know do you know what I think that might have been the plan I, I, I'm not I'm not quite sure I, I, I think so um, but you know like I said now I think just just any kind of release has been incredible I'm just so pleased that people are getting to see it that's the um, that's the main thing and I, I hope um, it would have been nice to vote against Tennant Christopher Nolan's film and maybe make yeah. the same amount of money as that'll make <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, just, just, uh, just it's just yeah to, to kind of find an audience and, and get out there and all that I'm, re- I'm really pleased it, now where can people see this uh, see Fisherman friend Chris do you know what I believe it's like the 24th all out on VOD and across the uh, country and all that that's what I'm um, I'm told and yeah uh, it's a couple of weeks time it's going to be out there and uh, please please check it out and yeah hopefully people will enjoy it and July 24th yes it will be released on uh, many different um, video on demand platforms and I you know I'll say this again it's definitely a movie right now couldn't the timing couldn't be more perfect because everyone right now in the world every all the world over is uh, looking for something um, well just to make them feel better and uh, do you know that everything the news every day is doom and gloom I think and we yeah. are looking for something to brighten uh, us up and this movie certainly does do that it is a definitely a good feel-good movie and and Thank well you. done I mean the well you know not a feel-good movie it's very well done the music is Thank on you. the acting is great Danny Mays did a wonderful job and James Purefoy and the rest of the cast were just really lovely and how they all worked together um, on this story so what was yeah. you know Cornwell I've I, I've become a 
during this pandemic, I've been like everybody else, streaming a lot of shows, and I became very enamored with the show called Pole Dark, which was also yep. filmed part in Cornwall and uh, was yeah. beautifully shot in Cornwall. And uh, the uh, there's the one scene you have when they're oh, like at the ocean, you know, and I thought, oh, that looks familiar. That looks like they made that. Same place that they filmed uh, <laughs> some of the scenes <laughs> from uh, uh, from Podark. Is, could that have been? I mean, are there many other? You know what? It it, it could have. It could well have been that. Like, and they also have a great show called uh, Doc Martin that's um, out here in the UK that um, has been running for many years and loved by many people. And uh, and that also films in Port I said, Do you know what though? Like, I, admittedly, I've not seen them, and that's not not for any other reason. I, like, when I was prepping the film. I was like, I said, oh, you should maybe check out Paul Dark or like Doc Martin. But you know, I didn't. I just kind of wanted to shoot my version of what I'd seen. So yeah. it could be a replica. It could be a replica of one of them episodes of Paul Dark. I'm not quite sure, but the intention was to kind of not watch anything or see anything that had been made around that area and just kind of see it as almost like a blank canvas. I'm not positive because we just kind of like use no reference and just kind of make my own way up with the team, really. But That's they're the great shows by all accounts. I'm not. I've not um, watched them, but I hear great things about them. Maybe I'll check, check them out. out. Doc- well, but- yeah, I may have to check out Doc Martin myself now. <laughs> That's a new one to put on. The yeah, list. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's been gone for many years. It's 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 definitely um you know it's on ITV here in the UK and people love it and it's it's been running for many years and it always gets good viewing figures and all that. So yeah, it, it's definitely um, loved and again it's it's brought so much kind of tourism to Port Isaac and to Cornwall and yeah and people. Yeah, that definitely love it. But you have to come across and get yourself to Cornwall as well, Jen. You'd love it down there. I would love. I would love to. I, I would definitely love to. Uh, I I live in Carmel, California, and it reminds me of what the coast of England, that part of the, the of England, looks feels and looks to me. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Our, we have the same kind of topography. It's it's colder, foggy here. I mean, we're a sister city, I think, of England, <laughs> of London. I think. <laughs> Our, summer, our winter is going on now. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, our, our winter. <laughs> So, we're meant to, yeah, we're, I'm looking, looking out of my, wind, my bedroom window at the minute. I mean, it's meant to be sunny here, but it's just, we've had it really bad. At the beginning of our lockdown, we had, thankfully, really nice weather. So you could, you know, sit in your garden and kind of, the weather was great. But now, the last few weeks, it's been really bad, which makes it slightly more difficult. So I'm hoping that the sun is around the corner. I hope so, too. But when people are looking and, and if the weather's not good, this is a good movie for them to tune into. What was the most yeah. difficult part of Filming for you on location and in general was there was the difficulties filming actually in Port Isaac? Do you know what? No, I'm trying to think. I can't. Do you know what? There wasn't off the top of my head. Nothing comes in where I said, "Oh, that was a tricky day." Are we? What we, what we, it would have been, we had basically, we had a month of May where we had a film in that month of May because Port Isaac, in the, before that is kind of a lot, it's obviously cold as you can imagine and you don't get a lot of the longer days effectively and the weather isn't as great. Um, and, and when the summer comes around, the tourism for that place is so, so, so busy that that would have definitely affected our film and day. But we picked the month of May, which was nice weather. Kids are still at school and tourism isn't so heavy at the time so all that it seemed very um seamless oh i tell you what was very tough actually not now now i remember filming on the boats was just i dreaded that for every single day in prep and we had like crew getting sick and that was definitely the hardest part of filming it so it oh i can imagine <laughs> how long were yeah, you it was like, um... we went out for quite a few we went out for full days really we went out and you know like first thing in the morning eight o'clock and then we would stay out there at about 12 30 and then come back in for lunch and then go back out there and i took every precaution speaking to them like i was like what bands do i have to put around my arm what uh, should i wear tights <laughs> and what should i what t-shirt should i wear and i, I took everything any kind of sickness medicine i was like please i just don't want to be sick um because it would have you know 
I wouldn't wouldn't know how I would have done it. And you know what? It was so lucky. We were so lucky that none of the actors got seasick because that would have had a big effect on the day. You know, if we've had an actor yes. who was sick and we had to go back in. Um, but no, thankfully, you know, th- thankfully, and I mean this not in a bad way, but it was like crew members who, you know, like if we could kind of pause for a little bit or kind of they could swap over with one another and it wasn't like the actors. Um, I'm sure even if it was me, they could have directed themselves and I'd have just sat and waited for them <laughs> back on shore. <laughs> might, have been, might have been a better scene. That. Might, have, might have been a better scene if I'd been sitting on the shore, actually. But um, no, it, 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 we're very, very lucky that none of them got sick. That is, that is lucky that none of them got sick. So what, yeah. um, who, what, what, what was the first movie that um, you saw that inspired you? Do you know what? My first film, so I, 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 I can very vividly remember this, but like, I've got no kind of cool, interesting stories of like, you know, when I was eight year old, my dad gave me a Super 8 camera and I started making short films. It was, it was nothing like that. I just, I was lucky that one day my mum and dad, when we were on a holiday, showed me a film called Arthur Goodly Moore and like Live oh, in the yeah. Nelly and um, I just remember watching it and kind of not you know laughing because my mum and dad were laughing at you know Goodly's performance and Sir John Gilgood mm-hmm. and all that and then just it just seemed to be a film that we would always put on and always like bring our families together and um, yeah I think it was that kind of like that, that installed something in me where I was like we now get together and watch a film and then we would do it we were getting a little bit older me and my younger brother and yeah, then, then films just became this thing where, as I say, we sat and watched. And I just then, as a, you know, like getting into as a, as a filmmaker and all that, I just was like, if I can just make something that brings people together or people that can kind of sit in an evening and watch something the way we did once with this Arthur film, then that would be kind of the goal. So, yeah, it was probably that film that, that started it off. And I would have been well into my kind of teens by that point. Um, yeah, there was no like a love of cameras at like seven or eight year old and again you can probably tell, tell that within the work but yeah so no it's definitely <laughs> Arthur so, and that's a wonderful film to be inspired by uh, to really <laughs> where we're such a which which is a great actor you know fun actor um, so you like oh, yeah, making yeah. movies that, that so your, your direction it seems like is making movies that you know make people laugh and uh, you know when they leave the movie theater they're uplifted is that would that be a true statement yeah Definitely, yeah. Literally, that's probably the the main, the main goal with it. Um, yeah, it's just to you know, like if, if people smile and come out, and um, that 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 feels like job job done for me. Do you know what I mean? That, that it's you know, it's, 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 the audiences love it, and yeah, I'm really really pleased and you know bringing people together. And I often try to like think about when I'm making things or reading things. I often think, oh, what would so and so and so and so, you know, on a Wednesday night in Birmingham and in England, I kind of come home and what would they kind of want to see and watch and all that. So I'm kind of led a little bit by that, really. And um, who knows, you know, I'm 34, it might change in, in years to come and all that, but um, it's definitely what I kind of look out for when I'm reading things as well. Well, Chris, I want to, I, I, it's been a joy uh, talking with you today and learning more about uh, behind the scenes of Fisherman's Friends, and I highly recommend everyone please it's, it's on a uh, video on demand and it's a feel-good movie it's heartwarming uh, about a, an extraordinary bunch of men um who are just it just you'll 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 feel good it's a family movie everyone can watch it so uh please find a fisherman's friends and chris thank you so much for being on the show thanks so much thank i really much- appreciate it honestly i've um, looked forward to chatting to you for a while so thanks for, um, thanks for having me on and um, for anybody who's listening thanks um, for listening uh, yeah hopefully you'll check out the film and hopefully you'll, you'll enjoy it but um, take care and you know look after one another in these um, very testing times wonderful message thank you Chris I wish you much success thanks very much now bye 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 you can bye-bye, listen bye-bye. to the Jam Price Show wherever whenever at thejampriceshow.com and also on the iHeart Podcast Network Spotify Apple Podcasts Google Play and you can go to The Jam Price Show on Facebook and please like the show. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The Jam Price Show. Thank you for listening. 
Podcast on Power Talk AM 1460 and FM 101.1. Streaming worldwide on iHeartRadio. Jan Price talks to the movers and shakers in the film business. The Jan Price Show. 